More than a decade after The Matrix, WB continues to put faith in the Wachowskis that no other studio has. 40 seconds of logos that basically assassinated the DreamWorks logo Fisher Boy and took the clouds for their own. Technically speaking, I'm an alien. Bella continues to narrate outside of the Twilight movies. My mother fell in love with him when she found him almost frozen to death. Uh, this guy looks pretty comfortable to me. He neither looks frozen nor near death. As yet in his casca. Tonight the sky is completely full of miracles. Including changing my Russian into English after one sentence. Jupiter. Or my dead body. They will name her Jupiter. Which inevitably means one of you is going to die and she'll be named Jupiter. And just because it ends up being the dad dying doesn't make it a satisfying twist. My mother pushed everyone except her sister out of her life. Somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic, she pushed me out too. Ugh, what a horrible analogy. Comparing the figurative pushing people out of her life with literal childbirth? If I had bought a ticket to this movie, I'd be asking for a double refund already. With Jupiter rising at 23 degrees ascendant. Roll credits. This is supposed to mean that I am destined for great things and that I will find the one true love of my life. You know, after dating a few people here and there and finally settling down, like most people really. One day you think Macaulay Culkin is the guy, then it's Ashton Kutcher. I wish it had been Natalie Portman, but beggars can't be choosers. Is this movie really making a futuristic Cinderella reference? <sighs> Meanwhile in Asgard, Eddie Redmayne walks through a green screen and hopes this doesn't cause the Academy to vacate his Oscar win two weeks later. Also, the theory of everything states that when you go to other planets, everything will look fake as shit. <sighs> Hate my life. Mila Kunis provides movie reviewers with their review's opening line. I find it immensely disheartening and unbelievable that this Russian family that cleans people's houses for a living never once thought, damn, Jupiter is fine. We should try to get her to model and maybe make tons of money. Movie steals the cleaning girl wonders what it's like to wear rich people's clothes thing from Made in Manhattan. Wait, is this entire movie Made in Manhattan? And why the f do I know Made in Manhattan well enough to even write this sh Discount purple-haired female Batman. He was a skyjacker. How'd you know that? The boots. Yeah, but how does she see that? We see this guy has a magic eye, and this guy's face looks like a trip to the moon. But how does she see the boots? If you can turn invisible, why would there be a need to go back to visible in this case? Kane's weapons and stuff are really cool, but then this action scene nearly renders it meaningless with all sorts of confusing editing. Also, nobody in Chicago sees this. That's him. It's got to be. We should warn Lord Balem. So this is one of those movies. Cram as many characters and character names into the first 15 minutes and expect everyone to remember them. Play a little bit of the pronoun game. Someone took this script and said, yes, this is totally not confusing after reading and rereading it 123 times. Green light. Meanwhile in Naboo. Ah, Eagle Catface dude is Eagle Catfaced. Meanwhile in Crematoria. You know when you watch a movie when you're eight years old and you think the effects are great? And then you watch that same movie 20 years later and realize they weren't great at all? Yeah, it's already 20 years later for Jupiter Ascending. I have not crossed the vastness of space for your pleasantries, Mr. Nice. <sighs> Man, what was Eddie Redmayne going for here? Because he has <sighs> succeeded. I want Miss Dunleavy found, and I want her dead. Awesome. Who the fuck is that again? I'm getting way more John Carter vibe here than I think the Wachowskis were hoping for. You want my advice? Yes. Why? Just to review, there is no reason to turn visible at this point, right? And did these assholes show up right after Jupiter went into the closet, thereby not knowing about her at all? Amazing convenience. Jupiter sets herself up for 15,000 fake comments on YouTube. Also, of course, mom calls when you're recording aliens, and your phone ring is the loudest alien attracting ring ever. Oh good, more characters. A whole table full. That's probably the reason you are not married. Men do not like smart women. That's racist. Movie introduces Jupiter's interest in astronomy all of a sudden. I mean, could you have at least shown her looking longingly up into the night sky just once in this movie before pimping eBay? Okay. My telescope dreams are important enough to agree to whatever your stupid plan is, because telescope. Mila Kunis simulates what guys sound like when they see Mila Kunis. Unfortunately, if she ever shows this to anyone, it will look exactly like someone photoshopped a bunch of aliens into the picture. If you saw this, would you be like, ah, aliens? Or would you be like, why did you take a picture of Mars Attacks? It's her. Good. Kill her. Aliens have watchdogs employed at the clinic for some reason. But during the entire time Jupiter's been alive, they've apparently never been employed at a hospital or gynecologist's office that would have aided in their search. Also, did they not bother to check who she was back at the other chick's apartment when she was taking pictures of them? If Kane knew this was happening today, why did he wait until the last minute? He must have waited so she'd believe his bullshit story later. Without it, he's just a kidnapper. Discount Channing to holy sh**! What the f did they do to him? Oh, yeah. Kane Wise. Kane Wise? Do we have to put up with this sh**? PG-13, mostly clothed, floating orgy. We received an FTL from Mr. Wise. What does FTL stand for? Let's speculate. Flaccid transportation legume. Freaking treacherous lagoon? F the leech. It's to hear that their planet is not the only inhabited planet in the verse. So lots of new names for things, but we'll just call the universe the verse. It's a name that sounds like aliens made it up while texting each other. Or they've been speaking to Mal Reynolds. Those things at the clinic. Keepers. Employed there for some reason, even though their only purpose on Earth appears to be to find you. What else were they looking for down here? 
Meanwhile, in Barsoom, Still alive. movie does itself no favors by reminding me of the Super Mario Brothers film. Ah! Go. Let's try and figure out why this movie bombed. I'm thinking it might have been the elf ears. Lord Bale and ship show up at exactly the moment Kane and Jupiter are taking a gravity elevator to his ship. You would have thought he would have done this already, considering how important it is, but he let her sleep for 12 hours instead. Let's see, Chicago getting destroyed by attacking aliens, shots of the action from inside office buildings, tons of CGI. This movie is Transformers Dark of the Moon. This guy shows up, announces aliens are real, and boom, laser soap, bunch of bullshit chase scene, before we've even had a chance to get to know Jupiter. I care less about this than I did the opening credits. Let's try and figure out why this movie bombed. I'm thinking it might have been the laser skates. Oh, good idea. Nobody innocent could possibly get killed from this. Man, this looks like a very expensive piece of sh**. It's at this point a million Mila Kunises would be recording this fight on their phones from somewhere. And speaking of a million Mila Kunises, I like my odds in that scenario. Also, Kane is going to give us some nuclear bullshit about how the aliens can cover all their tracks after an attack like this, but we're talking about a huge city with tons of eyes and cameras. And how convenient for your story that somehow nobody's going to remember or believe it when it's over. When a five minute chase feels like it's been going on 30 minutes, you've done f***ed up. Also, how slow is the military response time to the aerial destruction of Chicago? Kane intentionally destroys his own ship in order to destroy the enemy ship, which seems like maybe the stupidest piece of strategy ever. I just, I just need to know what in the hell is going on. Mila's initial table read comment somehow makes it into the shooting script. Those buildings will be rebuilt by tonight. That's impossible. Take a look. Buildings just happen to undergo instant rebuilding right at the moment Kane says they will be. But don't you think there would be cameras trained on the smoking then non-smoking Willis Tower at this point? It would be on CNN, which means millions more people are seeing this. Also, how do the aliens know how much stuff they actually destroyed during all that mess to rebuild all of it? Did they keep track? They won't get everybody, but no one ever believes the ones that slipped through the cracks. They cannot possibly know even one person who saw all this shit, much less the thousands who saw it, plus all the different angles from iPhone videos to completely cover this shit up. Also reminder, CNN. Why is this happening to me? Jupiter Ascending steals the why is this happening to me from the Matrix. <laughs> I can guarantee you that slowing down this footage would not give you the opportunity to say this without a ton of green lasers and shit flying around you at some point during this long whiny monologue. How is it possible for a single splice to destroy an entire fleet of shadows. Fleet? Weren't there only like five or six ships tops? I'd call that a squadron, maybe a team, but not a fleet. What is he doing living way out here? It's a marshal for the Aegis. The Aegis? They're like cops. This entire movie is going to be devoted to exposition and backstory, isn't it? Sean Bean isn't dying in this scene. Did we really need this fight between Sean Bean and Channing Tatum? And wouldn't Kane probably know something like this would happen and give him a call before knocking on his door? Or does he not have any way to communicate? What is going on here? The reaping. Also, despite the fact that these bees will definitely not hurt her, she doesn't know that, and Jupiter does not panic or run inside the house to take cover. Why hasn't Jupiter ever noticed anything weird like this before, if she's the queen of Earth? Your Majesty. The universal signal for a person of royal bloodline throughout the galaxy shall be his or her ability to control bees. And so it shall be. You want your wings back or not? You had wings? <laughs> Majesty has no idea of the scientific miracles that human beings are capable of. Why won't those human beings share things like this? Honestly, this is not the first question I would be asking after I saw a bunch of bees coordinate with my movements and someone just call me your majesty. But sure, let's get this burning question out of the way first. No, bees are genetically designed to recognize royalty. In children's books? Bees don't lie. Bees don't lie. But he just commands it once a gene print is verified. What do you mean verified? Has it not already been verified? A lie content needs a pack. It's a center of gravity. This movie just took an unfortunate turn for the Twilight. Also, you're literally saying this guy is a lone wolf. It's stupid when you say it out loud like that, so let's dress it up a bit with a dramatic reading from Sean Bean. You know, you both have marks in your neck, but they're slightly different. Since Jupiter woke up from the clinic battle, it's been a solid 20 minutes of exposition. It feels like they could have made this where we get the answers to these questions organically at the start. Introduce Jupiter way later in the movie, and when she starts asking questions, you do a cross dissolve. And she's like, oh, that's why everything is the way it is. Then you don't have a whole movie asking questions like this. Are you saying your people kill the dinosaurs? This movie is a comedy, right? So if you had the ability to turn this craft invisible, you should have done it way before 100 yards from the house, stupid idiot. This planet was seeded by a brass axe industry. Sean Bean told his agent, I want to do a movie where I don't get to do that much, but I get to say a lot of complicated technobabble expositional lines and stuff with bees. Find me a movie like that, can you? Can you not attack while you're invisible? Why ever become visible? Why? Twice now they've run into Kane with his shield, and I guess shooting at his legs is not an option. I think Kane's shield is cool and all, but damn, he's dead. He's just wildly throwing that thing and managing to block all the shots. Knock knock, who is it? The Lost World Jurassic Park? Why come on in and join the fun? Amazingly, this ship takes off with its hatch still open, giving Kane a chance to board the ship before it leaves. 
Also, do these ships not alert you to extra weight when a Channing Tatum jumps on it? God damn it. Meanwhile, in The Fifth Element. Mr. Knight. I think Eddie Redmayne took acting tips for this movie from Voldemort. Not Ray Fiennes, Voldemort. Jupiter Jones. Wait a fucking minute. There's something distinctly unsettling about that name. Accessing memories from my childhood. Oh yes, Jupiter Jones is the name of the main character in the Three Investigators books. I can't wait until she solves the mystery of the dead man's riddle. Also, Jupiter Jones. This movie did not miss one chance to fuck up. Not one. Holy sh**. I guess on the list of things to worry about on this planet, fire is just below unicorn breeding. When the exact same genes reappear in the exact same order, it is for us what you would call reincarnation. You mispronounce stupid. Are you some kind of vampire race? Damn, the Wachowskis really like having their movies explain vampire myths. That is an oddly specific and tiny thing to be obsessed with, I think. But then look what I do for a living, so it's all relative, I suppose. Where do you get these light bulbs? You grow them. Wachowskis once again go to the humans are resources for alien life plot, blindly hoping to recreate that matrix magic. I was told that the house of a brass exceeded the earth. Movie expects me not to laugh every time I hear this name, like a kid mispronouncing the popular album from Santana. This asshole's been skating all through this place with no problem. Now suddenly there are guard bots around, as if in answer to how ridiculous the non-detection has been so far. Let's try and figure out why this movie bombed. I'm still thinking it might have been the laser skates. Kane's back has turned to two guards and they don't bother shooting him. I have more in common with the dog than I have with you. I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. This adds some disturbing subtext to this romantic scene. I love dogs. Movie thinks if the main character repeats her embarrassing line for a laugh, it'll make it all okay. Well, I'm here to tell you it doesn't, asshole. Movie now thinks it's some sort of modern day Brazil, which undoubtedly means we're about to see Terry Gilliam in a cameo, being a good sport about it. Almost four full minutes of not hilarious space bureaucracy. Movie is also liberally stealing from the Akira Kurosawa film, Akiru, but that movie's 63 years old and Japanese, so who could possibly have seen that fine film? Yep, there's Terry Gilliam, all right. It looks like he's being a good sport about it. I will never complain about the DMV, ever again. It's 2015, people, and many DMVs are using modern technology to automate the process. Let's come up with a new cultural touchstone for waiting in long lines. I nominate Walmart. He thinks if we help you, then you might help us get back in the Legion. I see. Good to know what both lies. There's pretty much no way you heard that, dude, even with your super Sean Bean hearing. Also, Sean Bean is playing a character who double crosses the good guys cliche. Don't make this harder than it has to be. Hey man, a boner's a boner. Meanwhile, in the Dark Aster. I am Titus Abrasix. Stop! <laughs> Stop, please, you're killing me. You are aware that by detaining me without consent, you are in direct violation of Statute 27B-6. stroke I guess it's hilarious that she somehow learned this shit while being whisked through the bureaucratic offices and everything, but I'm calling bullshit on it anyway. There's only so much leeway you get in a movie like this. Futuristic prison cells are like this. Mila Kunis saw the wardrobe for this scene, yet still decided to go ahead and film it. They let him keep his laser skates on when they threw him in prison. It has many names. Regenex, Resell, Nectar. Soylent Green? It comes from people. Soylent Green? Will you marry me? Motherfucker. Also, I guess Jupiter never answers Titus, and they will soon part ways with their mutual admiration of loose threads. It's like the lie you are now concocting that somehow you will survive being tossed into the void. Titus steals the Bond villain way of killing Bond in every Bond ever. These assholes keep his motherfucking space boots on when they send him out into the void. Look guys, I would've won this. Any child would've won this. It's like, oh, I see you have your special flying boots on. We should remove those when you go into the void so that you can't use them. Gladys, put down in my schedule I'll be banging hookers by 4 p.m. Kane should be dead by then. Wait, they left a container of these life-saving insta-suits in the shoot people into the void room? Well, he's running out of air in the empty vastness of space. I guess it's time for an ex machina. Whew, just in time. Beauty and her beast. Yes, how many more movies can we steal from? Let's try to break a record. Yeah, go ahead and shake a little Hunger Games over this thing. No one's gonna notice. Oh, you did not just Pacific Rim this bitch too, did you? God, I could have come up with a higher total for this movie by counting moments it stole from other films instead of sins. Scores upon scores of these Warhammer things and two tiny ships will cut through them no problem. Sheer math should dictate that at least a hundred more Warhammers should go unscathed and destroy Kane and Stinger, so movie does not believe in math. Honestly, this whole thing is filled with so much screen noise it barely registers as visual information. What's happening? Who knows? Did you know there are antelopes called dick ticks? There are. It's amazing. This is the slowest goddamn wedding ever. And I am being constantly reminded of John Carter. It's the exact same movie, give or take a Taylor Kitsch. But I believe Taylor Kitsch and Channing Tatum were the exact same person. Have you ever seen them in the same room together? No, you haven't. And a year from now, both actors will have played Gambit. Think about it. No, don't think about it. I'm tracking heavy sim activity. That's gotta be where she is. You mean there's a thing on your ship that detects sims? You gotta be fucking kidding me. The anti-aircraft guns on this ship fail to anti-aircraft. So seriously, there's nobody here except a bunch of sims. No guards, nobody who can take Kane out. 
more you care, the more the world finds ways to hurt you for it. By that rationale, this movie should be giving me extreme pleasure right now, because I couldn't care less. Wait, they somehow knew she'd be coming back home? Remember, they kidnapped her family just before the wedding. This would be awfully awkward if they were just sitting here waiting for her and she was either successfully married or decided to stay with Kane in space. Movie accidentally captures footage of Eddie Redmayne being bored and keeps it in the final edit. I CREATE LIFE! That line reading. Kane is not properly motivated until he hears the inspirational Sean Bean speech. Nothing against Sean Bean because he's awesome, but being suddenly motivated in this way is like getting inspired by Chappie's cat poster. This Swiss Army torture device is absolutely the most unnecessary thing ever built. I realize it might be hard to watch a loved one die, but this heroine is about to sentence humanity at large to death to save a few people. So she's an asshole and has obviously never seen the Wrath of Khan. I knew that I strongly advise against this reckless course of action that will almost certainly cost you your life. But Captain, he basically took on all those warhammers and anti-aircraft guns by himself earlier. Do you think going through Jupiter's great red spot is going to do harm? Bah! Also, Kane hits Jupiter's G-spot, and it's a treacherous experience. Subtext much? And this crash definitely won't kill him either. Out of nowhere, Kane shows up, once again unencumbered by even the minimum of security. Yep, definitely time for kissing. You're only in all the danger- oh, f it. Other titles this movie considered. Guardians of the Riddick Galaxy, Laser Skates, and Jupiter's Stupid. You just like her, you won't pull that trigger. In the midst of trying to get gravity to decide this, this lizard thing flies right next to a whatchamacallit. Kane grabs the whatever it is and breaks free by stabbing him with the doodad. Kane just wiped out an entire squad of these things, but this one lone lizard dude is suddenly going toe to toe with him for a really long time, simply because the movie is trying to create tension and stretch the runtime. Ladies? And I'm gonna make you regret it. <sighs> ah, kill him already! Sorry, I sometimes say that when I'm suddenly roused from sleep. Was I right this time? Woman who scrubbed toilets all her life is suddenly a badass action heroine. Man, this entire complex is breaking down and exploding, but keeps giving her ways to survive and escape. Look, goddammit, Jupiter went in all sorts of weird, random directions, running from the destruction of this city. She is not running into Balaam right now. Is this familiar, mother? No, it's not! She can't remember the shit that you do! I'm adding 25 sins for this. No, 50. Man, this movie really went all in on that laser skates idea. And I gotta say, that was a very bad decision. We have very little time to get back to the ship, but sure, let's land here in the middle of the destruction to give you a rest or something. Just breathe. Wait a minute, did she need the spacesuit to breathe? Because she's been running around this place with no spacesuit the entire time. What the hell is the meaning of this? Also, how did the Insta spacesuit know to cover everything except the laser skates? Are they working despite being inside the spacesuit boots? That's not how fire works. Jupiter and Kane obviously get on the ship at the last second, which is excellent timing. Now the movie's going to waste time trying to make us think they didn't. You know, those suits look pretty Star Trek into- Oh, f***ing forget it. I'm sure no one will ever see this or be curious about it. That ain't bad either. Well, they're a little creepy. And they probably complicate pegging. I can get used to this. You can? Watch this. I sure as f*** hope this means it's over now. Okay, earlier we were told Chicago wouldn't know that huge battle happened because the aliens could erase people's memories. But what kind of power did Jupiter and Kane have to do the same thing? Because they don't have that power. And they were shot down by the military five seconds later. No! 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 Can you read my mind? I'm not getting sucked up into heaven! What do you mean? Why not? I don't know why not! Take Come my on. hand! Okay, take me with you, Jay! Uh... I have to warn you. I've heard relationships based on intense experiences never work. Okay. We'll have to base it on sex then. Whatever you say, ma'am. I was told that the house of Abraxas exceeded the earth. I, 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 I didn't ask for a Santana Abraxas. I didn't listen to Santana Abraxas. I didn't do anything. It comes from people. You gotta tell them, Silent Green is people! Houston, I have a bad feeling about this mission. Please expand. Okay, let me tell you a story. I will find him! A heart full of song. So I'm doing everything all wrong. <laughs>